continue to show his mercy on the leader of man, the Prophet Muhammad. His household and companions and followers till they offer accountability. Today, we are discussing current issues that the country is witnessing. Election is just by the door the next nine days. Islam has a say in all our affairs. It is a complete way of life. That's why a Muslim should not in any way deny himself of a right given to him to contribute toward selecting an ideal leader in this nation. It would be very wrong for one to say, no, Islam has no say. Islam has say about it. Islam is concerned about leadership. We have an incident where one of the companions of Rasulullah went to him and asked for position. He wants leadership. Abu Zar al Gifari, may Allah have mercy on him. It's a companion that is full of Iman. Uncompromising companion. Because in the brutal period of Mecca, where companions have been persecuted and maltreated and oppressed, they cannot pray freely, openly. They prayed in Darul Artham secretly in Makkah period. When Abu, Gaf, uh, Abu Zar al-Gifari accepted Islam, he went straight to Kaaba to go and recite the Quran. Because of his solid, genuine Iman, without fear for anybody, and he was successful in reciting part of the Quran in Kaaba, which nobody can do at that hour. That to prove his solid Iman, it was Sayyidina Abu Bakr that secured him. The Meccans beat him to the extent that he, he became unconscious and he came back to Rasulullah after regaining his consciousness. And Rasulullah warned him not to do that again. And he advised him to go back to his clan, Gafar. And he preached Islam to the extent that almost all the clan accepted Islam. He's a strong companion. He's among the Muhajirun. Rasulullah recognizes him in a number of instances and he prayed for him. And because of him, he prayed for his tribe, Gafar. He said, Gafar, Gafar Allahu Laha, because of Abu Dhar al So it's a companion that is having Iman, confirmed Iman by Rasulullah himself. But when it comes to leadership, when he asks for position, Rasulullah put his hand on his shoulder so that Abu Zar will be attentive to the answer of the question. He said, you are weak. You are weak, not in Iman. He is weak in leadership. Anybody who is having question mark in his behavior cannot be a leader today in this country. Because corruption is almost every corner. If you participate with them, there is no way you can question them because they are your friends in corruption. We need as much as possible somebody whose CV is clean and he should be supported to deal with those who are corrupt. Even if they are in the highest level of authority. These are the personalities that can rule this country and make a move forward. Or else we continue to be stagnant. And as uh, soon as you see every room that is corruption, That's why Rasulullah told him that he is weak and uh, leadership is a trust. It's a manner. It's not about you holding your chest bar alone. No, it is decision making. You decide even some people are to go. You decide even some people are to be jailed. You decide even some people are to be suspended. If you are not having that quality, you cannot lead. And you cannot live, especially in a nation of ours, 
You can lead the people in some other small, small villages that are claimed, claimed to be countries. Nigeria, of about 200 million, and most people are criminals. Now, Abuzar, as Imanic as he was, Rasulullah disqualify him. So, a number of politicians need to be disqualified. And he told him for that that on the day of judgment is going to be a disgrace. You have been honored here. You are going to be disgraced there on the day of the hour. And it's regrettable. Disgrace and regret. He's a young one, So it's not an easy assignment for you to be a leader. And the hadith is sound. And we that are participating in selecting leaders, we should be careful. Because if you decided based on selfish interest or tribal sentiment, or party sentiment, or whatsoever sentiment, you decided on your own to select somebody you know is corrupt. You are having commission in every step of his corruption. And that's why the two ladies advised their father to nominate for them as a husband somebody who is trustworthy, somebody who is strong, not somebody who is corrupt. And all that is happening today in the country lack of security, lack of facilities, lack of development, all are caused by those individuals that are corrupt in this nation. Rights of enjoyment has been denied to Nigerians based on bad leadership. And that's why in 2014, the African Union, AU, high-level panels on illicit financial flows estimated that about $600 billion was illegally transferred out of Africa, out of which $40 billion was estimated to have originated from Nigeria. In the address, United Nations General Assembly, 70th session of that, it was declared there and accepted with those figures you can hear of. Billion. One billion dollars alone can do a lot. One billion dollars, not one billion naira. And that's at times times three fifty. Not only one, not only two. This money are in the pocket of individuals. Why should if not because Allah is assisting those who are praying in Nigeria? Nigeria could have been actually property to go on sale. Because after consuming all the, all the values, they would sell Nigerians the bad leaders we have in this country. No mass, no sympathy. And that's why no woman leader can lead. When I say woman, I don't mean women by, by, by nature of biological creature. A man of real man is the one that can lead this country now. And in all segments of leadership, governors, chairmen, whosoever is interested must be a man. A man in the heart, real man, or else corruption will continue and continue to die in poverty and crisis uncountable. That's why the president said, You will not kill corruption. Corruption is going to kill us. It has started killing Nigerians. Uh, we, are, we are very happy with the happening with the CG. Because that's the only way you can. CGN. That's the only way, CGN. You can tackle corruption in this nation. When individuals are not spared, we are also happy when we learn the former secretary to the federal government also is in the hand in, uh, under investigation. These are the ways we can check the excesses of corrupt leaders in this nation. Nobody should be spared. But when you make the mistake of selecting a corrupt person, automatically you are increasing corruption in this nation and there is no time when corruption will stop. A leader in this country at all levels must have clean CV, especially in the area of corruption. When that is not done in the few days that is coming, then I'm telling you we are in more danger than what it used to be. Allah says, those who have made farm on us, they are the ones who establish salat, they give zakat, they command people to be righteous, and they prevent them actually from being evil. 
any leader that doesn't have this quality of commanding goodness, preventing what is bad, or involving himself in bad, or you know he's not going to be bad, automatically you are not moving anywhere. May Allah assist us. May Allah guide us. May Allah give us the ability to select those who are righteous people. And may Allah also give those who knows they are not able to withdraw on their own. So that this country will continue to move forward with leaders who are interested in the welfare of the masses. <laughs>